Jacko sponsors the National League on BT Sport. Hello everybody, welcome along for our latest foray into the Vanarama National League here on BT Sport. Coming up over the next half an hour, all the key incidents from this weekend's action. Here's a little flavour of what you can expect. In a week when four National League managers lost their jobs, it was honours even in El Glossico. Quimsby and Eastley's hopes of a magnificent seven. And ten-man strugglers Halifax hammer Gateshead. No doubt about the game of the day in the National League, a Gloucestershire derby featuring the top two in a title tussle. Forest Green Rovers were the early pace setters, but Cheltenham Town went into this match with a one-point lead over their rivals. As a cagey start at Warden Road, the best opening of the first 45 minutes came when Billy Waters forced a save out of Steve Arnold in the Forest Green goal. The game, though, exploded into life after the interval. Harry Pell scored from a set-piece last weekend at Southport, and Pell powered in again to break the deadlock. Arnold left distraught by his defensive wall. Manager Eddie Pennock would have been delighted with Forrest Green's response. Veteran striker John Parkin denied by Dylan Phillips before being denied by the outside of the post. And the visitors were given a golden chance to equalise on the hour. Rob Dickey adjudged to have bundled over Curtis Guthrie. Penalty given. You couldn't have asked for a more experienced head than John Parkin to step up from 12 yards, but that's a spot kick the Beast will want to banish from his memory. But Rovers were not to be denied, and into the last 20 minutes, they showed their fighting spirit. Parkin with a miscued volley, Darren Carter, who once got a penalty to take Birmingham into the Premier League, notching for his third game in a row. Clearly a man for the big occasion. Plenty of time for both sides to battle it out for a winner. Cheltenham thought their moment had arrived. Pell again, this time he rattled the crossbar. Then came a major talking point. Freer striking fear into the Cheltenham backline. Pell again in the thick of the action. Referee Adrian Holmes ruling no penalty and no booking either for simulation. The ball, though, did find the back of the net in stoppage time, but as Freer threatened again, Guthrie converted his cross using his hand. No goal given, honours even in the game known as El Glossico. Both managers left pondering the positives of a point. We didn't quite get our game going. Uh, we had it going for about 20 minutes in the uh, end of the first half and maybe 10 minutes at the start of the second half. Other than that, they had a bit of play as well, but... Uh, all in all, it's probably a better point for us because it keeps us still at the top there. Cheltenham played really well um, and it was a proper derby. Um, no one was pulling out of tackles or nothing like that. So, um, but I'm um, just disappointed obviously with the goal we conceded. Um, but other than that, it showed a lot of character and very pleased. I thought both sets of supporters were fantastic today um, and it's, it's great for the area um, of uh, Gloucestershire. It was third versus fourth at the Silver Lake Stadium. Eastleigh were unbeaten in six, while Grimsby Town were in a rich vein of form themselves, without a defeat on the road in eight matches. Confidence brimming in both sides. Alex Jones clean through. An outstanding last-ditch tackle from Wes Atkinson saving the day. Eastleigh were back on the attack. Josh Payne's free kick deflected onto the crossbar. But it was Paul Hurst's side who broke the deadlock just before the half-hour mark. The home side hoped they'd snuffed out the danger. Chris Todd won't have been happy with the ease at which the ball was slipped through to Grimsby's top scorer, Padraig Armand. The Irishman staying on side to score his 15th goal in a Mariners shirt. It was a game of few chances as Eastleigh were struggling to break down the Grimsby rearguard action. Jai Reason's effort keeping Grimsby's Josh McKeown on his toes. The Wayside had lost just one of their previous 14 games and could have doubled their advantage. Arnold's ball into the area, causing Will Evans to clear from inside his own six-yard box. And Connor Townsend, who scored spectacularly last weekend, almost outfoxed Eastley's Ross Flitney. With Cheltenham and Forest Green both dropping points, it was a precious victory for Grimsby. You know, after the game, now we look at it and it's been a very good day for us. Makes that long journey back more enjoyable. Um, and it, we're in a good, you know, a good moment and on, on a good run of form. 
So hopefully we can continue that. The difference is obviously at the top end of the, of the league. If if a team scores, um, it's very difficult to get back into it because they're going to hold on to that. Uh, and they did that today, and you've got to give them credit for that because they've come here and put in a good way performance. But yeah, that's football. We have to pick ourselves up. Um, we're a strong unit. We've been on a great run, and it was always going to it was always going to stop. Darren Kelly's 47-day spell as manager was called to a halt by Halifax this week. The National League's bottom club were 10 points adrift of safety when Kelly suffered his second sacking of the season, having previously left Oldham Athletic. Assistant Jim Harvey took the reins for the trip to Gateshead and Harvey and Halifax enjoyed a helping hand with a quarter of the game gone. Gateshead defender Martin Smith heading the ball into his own net. No team had conceded more goals than the visitors, so Gates said new opportunities would be forthcoming. Ryan Bowman was first to pounce on the bouncing ball, but although his header went wide, referee Michael Salisbury awarded a penalty for the challenge by Halifax keeper Russell Griffiths. It was a double punishment for Griffiths who was sent off, and I think it's fair to say that the man on loan from Everton wasn't too happy about the decision. Bowman is Gateshead's main marksman this year. That was his ninth goal of the campaign. But then followed four minutes to defy all footballing logic. The ten men managed to get their noses back in front thanks to this stunning strike from Kingsley James. A fourth goal of the season for James. Gateshead goalkeeper Sam Russell barely moved. Caretaker Harvey has managed various clubs in the past, including Forest Green. And this is what you call a new manager bounce. Despite being a man down, Halifax went into half-time with a two-goal lead. Sean Tooton improbably making it 3-1 to the visitors at the break. This was a result that cost the Gateshead manager Malcolm Crosby his job after just five months in charge. A second four-goal defeat in a week confirmed by Tooton's second of the game, the final nail in the coffin for Crosby. Halifax, though, end a run of five straight defeats. Well, of course, before we can even think about doing anything in the league, we have to start and put, get a performance together, something that we can take us forward, and, and, that, and that's a big step in the right direction today. As I say, the players will get an awful lot out of that, individually and collectively. That will pull it all tighter together, which will give us a wee bit more confidence going into the, the next run of games. Uh, they're not going to be easy, and we've still got an awful lot of work to do, of course, mm -hmm. but at least it's, you know, it's going to help us uh, look forward to the next game as opposed to sort of dreading, dreading training again and the next, the next match is coming around and, and getting hammered. Um, hopefully, you know, we, we can work our way out of that sort of scenario. Lincoln City were looking to boost their playoff ambitions with three points against a Torquay United side who had tasted victory just once in the last 17 games. And there was no sign of the form book being thrown out of the window. Luke Waterford scored his first goal for Lincoln last weekend. His second came after just 16 minutes at Playmore. The Torquay goal was under siege in the first half. Jack Muldoon stinging the palms of keeper Dan Leverkusen. And the host needed the help of the woodwork soon after. The shots from Leon Hearn beating Leverkusen all ends up. And with just 25 minutes gone, Lincoln were two up. The Torquay backline beaten all too easily by Matt Reed's flick on. Hearn applying the finish, his eighth goal of the season. Two of those have come against Torquay. The visitors really could have been out of sight before half time, only the offside flag denying Hearn a third goal. Then a moment Waterfall won't want to see again, as he could only connect with a crossbar with the goal gaping. Lincoln struck the bar again. This would have been a goal of the season contender from Reed. Hearn gobbling up the rebound, but again from an offside position. But Chris Moyes' side finally made the game safe with 15 minutes to play, and it was that man Waterfall again. Three goals in two games for him now, not what you'd expect from a centre half. Kevin Nicholson's men responded immediately though, 60 seconds later in fact. Dan Butler drilling in his second goal of the campaign. And it could have been a nervy finale for the away side had Ben Gehring's shot found the back of the net. Player manager Nicholson posed the final threat on Paul Farman's goal. But Lincoln are on a roll. They secure their third win in a row.
In what proved to be his last game in charge, Darren Edmondson took Barrow to face Dover Athletic at the Crabble Athletic Ground. Edmondson had been given a month by the board to turn their fortunes around, but as you'll have guessed, he wasn't successful in achieving that. Stephen Payne's shot early on had Barrow keeper Joel Dixon scurrying. Dover have serious promotion aspirations and took the lead after just 11 minutes when Payne played in Ricky Modest, who slotted past Dixon to break the deadlock. Barrow were looking over their shoulders towards the relegation zone after three defeats in their last four games. Top scorer Andy Cook couldn't conjure up an equaliser there. It looked like being another long afternoon in store for Barrow when defender Richard Orlu ventured downfield and fired in his first goal since January. And it was game, set and match before the interval. Dover winning the ball back in midfield and once it landed at the feet of Ricky Miller, he only had one thing in mind, namely smashing the ball past Dixon to make it 3-0. Three tricky Rickies on the score sheet for Dover all before half-time. It went from bad to worse for Barrow. Niall Cowperthwaite overrunning the ball and a dangerous tackle left Sammy Magri in a heap and left referee Mark Pottage with little option but to send Cowperthwaite off, the fifth Barrow player to receive his marching orders this season. Even with ten men, Barrow did manage a consolation. Dover's defending left a lot to be desired and Cook scored his 12th goal of the season. But he couldn't save Edmondson's job or stop Dover from getting back to winning ways. You, you're playing Forest Green, you're playing, playing Eastley, massive, massive club with massive budget. So, you know, you're gonna, you, if you're going to lose games, you're going to lose it use games like that so there was no way of uh, no need to keep people's uh, spirits up just go out and play the way they, they've been playing all this season and last season Aldershot and Wrexham have had contrasting fortunes of late as they came into this fixture at the recreation ground the hosts had lost their last two the visitors had won their last three it was Barry Smith's Aldershot who edged a tight and tense first half in Hampshire Top scorer Charlie Walker getting in behind with an early glimpse of goal. But his shot was comfortably dealt with by keeper Cameron Belford. Into the second half and the Welsh side was starting to display their dominance. Dominic Vose pulling the strings in midfield and Wes York's header was brilliantly clawed away by Aldershot's Phil Smith. But within a minute, Wrexham made the breakthrough. Bose again involved and his low cross was flicked home by York, his seventh of the season, putting Gary Mills' men in front. An uphill task for Aldershot became that much tougher when Jake Gallagher lunged into this challenge with Jamal Fifield and collected his second yellow card in six minutes. Incredibly, that's Gallagher's third red card in his last three starts. As is becoming a theme on this week's show, the ten men rallied. And if Richard Brodie had made proper contact with this cross, it might have seen an older shot equaliser. But Wrexham hung on for their fourth win in a row. You're watching our latest roundup from the Vanarama National League here on BT Sport. Much more still to come after this short break. Welcome back to our latest roundup from the Vanarama National League here on BT Sport. Let's get straight back to the action. This was the first time these teams had met and Tranmere were looking to end their run of three consecutive home defeats. It was the visitors, though, who opened the scoring. Liam Hogan's defensive header wasn't enough to stop Danny Boschel smashing the ball into the net. That's his second of the season. And Adam Mecky corner met the head of James Norwood, who netted the equaliser to bring the home side level on the stroke of half time. But we had to wait until the 93rd minute for the moment when the game was finally decided. Norwood put clean through on goal, but keeper Stephen Drench clipped the striker inside the box. Penalty to Tranmere. Norwood then picked himself up and stepped up to take the resulting spot kick. Geisley dropped down to 18th with three consecutive defeats, Tranmere up to 10th. 
This fixture found Macclesfield's Christian Dennis pit against Bromley's Moses Emmanuel. Dennis was just two goals behind the league's top goalscorer Emmanuel, who scored 16 in the campaign so far. Bromley started brightly, but Macclesfield keeper Juan Jalau made himself big to deny that man Emmanuel from giving them the lead. As play continued, the game's first casualty came in the form of an onlooking ball girl. Midfielder Paul Turnbull was quick to make sure she was OK. What a gent. Dennis then came close to opening the scores with this headed effort, but keeper Chris Kettings was equal to it. The opener came when Chris Holroyd laid off to Paul Lewis, who scored his fourth of the campaign and equalled his goal tally from last season. Macclesfield then had the chance to make it two when a ball from Dennis bounced off the hand of Ben Chorley. Top scorer Dennis stepped up, but he was denied by a fantastic save from Kettings, who had his emergency loan extended for the club for this game. Emmanuel came extremely close to levelling things up when this effort rattled the post. But it was Dennis in the 80th minute who would put the game to bed. Holroyd with the assist, allowing Dennis to slide the ball through the legs of Kettings. This win takes Macclesfield up to ninth, three points off the playoff places and brings Dennis just one goal behind Emmanuel in the scoring charts. Chester came into this match neatly tucked into mid-table, whereas visitors Woking were looking to distance themselves from the drop after winning just one of their last ten. The scoring was opened in the 15th minute when an onslaught of attempts saw John Goddard denied before Dan Holman beat goalkeeper John Worsnop to fire home his eighth of the season. Chester responded when this pinpoint long ball from Tom Shaw found the feet of Ross Hanna but was parried away by keeper Jake Cole. In the second half, Chester came closer to an equaliser when Ben Hennigan's header hit the crossbar, but Jordan Chappell couldn't convert the rebound. Hannah then launched this free kick towards the Woking goal, but keeper Cole again kept his team in the lead. And then a great piece of skill from Jake Caprice left Ian Sharp dazed and confused. His cross landed for Goddard, who buried his 10th of the season and doubled the visitors' advantage. Five minutes into added on time, Hannah finally got his goal after Craig Hobson lofted the ball into his path, but it was purely a consolation for a frustrated Chester who stay in 13th, woking now one place behind them. Former striker Dino Mamria took the reins at his old club after Southport parted company with Paul Carden on Monday. They made the 520-mile round trip to face fellow strugglers Welling, with both teams only managing one win in five. The first chance came from a Southport corner, and the visitors will be wondering how on earth this ball stayed out after Mike Phoenix fired the ball at goal. Somehow it was saved by keeper Mike McIntaggart. It became obvious that not everyone had done their warm-ups before kick-off as referee Paul Yates pulled up lane before half-time. He was replaced by assistant Chris Powell. And it was in the second half when Southport would take the lead. A fantastic strike from Phoenix on loan from Barnsley beat McIntaggart and secured the three points for his team. Well worth the trip for Dino Mamria, who marks his managerial debut for Southport with a victory. It was two clubs actually, and then I had to make a decision which way to go. Uh, and obviously, I've, hopefully, I made the right decision. And uh, it, was, it was very. It was late on uh, on Wednesday night. I met the chairman. I went, drove all the way to Southport, uh, met the chairman, done the deal, then met the, the players on uh, on Thursday morning. So it was uh, it was quite quick. Boreham Wood in blue have been hovering above the relegation zone for most of the season and with just five wins parted company with manager Ian Allenson earlier in the campaign only for him to return as director of football this week. And Charlie McDonald had a fantastic chance to open the account for the visitors but his shot ricocheted off the post and was kicked out of play. It was in the second half that Inform Altrincham would start to shine. Nicky Clee's wonderful back heel found the feet of Jordan Sinnott, but he was denied by keeper James Russell. 
The deadlock was finally broken in the 76th minute. Mark Rankin nutmeg defender Scott Doe and Clee buried the ball on his second attempt to score his first goal of the season. Borumwood did have a chance to bring the scores level before the final whistle, but Callum Reynolds couldn't convert his header, meaning Altrincham claimed all three points and move up to 17th in the table. So, just in case you've lost count, eight National League sides have changed their managers this season, one of them twice. And after this weekend's results, Cheltenham maintain their one-point lead at the top of the table after their one-all draw with closest challengers, Forest Green. But with both Grimsby and Dover winning, they're chasing pack edge ever closer to the league leaders. Lincoln's season gets better and better. Their victory over struggling Torquay means they move into the playoff places, but Bromley's season has taken a drum Dramatic turn for the worst. Three consecutive defeats and only one win in six means they've dropped from the promotion places to 11th. At the other end of the table, despite Halifax's huge win at Gateshead, they're still rooted to the bottom and Southport closed the gap to just two points on Boreham Wood. Finally, if you're wondering where the game between Braintree and Kidderminster is, that was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. So just enough time to tell you about our next live game on Saturday at midday our cameras will be in Eastleigh as Chris Todd's men take on Southport, all exclusively live on BT Sport 1. That's it for this time, thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon. Jacko sponsors the National League on BT Sport.